I love it when companies send us stuff where I assume that the thing is, say, average or average at best, but then it turns out that it's actually kind of good. Say hi to Enermax. In the past, we had some Enermax stuff featured on the channel, not the worst stuff around, but for example, their ETS T50 wasn't revolutionary in any way. The same for their AIO, it was good, but not exceptionally good. Well, maybe now it has changed. This is the Enermax Lick Max Flow 360, a 360mm, 38mm thick radiator AIO, which performs not bad at all. But before we cover anything about the AO itself, let's first talk about the benchmarks. We benchmarked the cooler on top of our standardized benchmark machine featuring a 3900K with three different presets, 120, 250 and 320. At 120 watts, which would be the most gaming-like workload, the Lick Max Flow in 360 at full blast managed to keep the CPU at 28.4 degrees C above ambient, which is just a margin of error away from the Li and Li Gal ahead to Trinity. So a quite good result. From there we lower the fan speed in 10% steps while keeping the pump at max speed and note down the noise and temperature creating these noise to performance lines. Interesting to note here is that unlike most other high performance AIOs, the Lick Max flow did not create these weird looking lines, something that is quite common on very low workloads. Anyway, noise wise, the new Enermax AIO doesn't deliver a bad result, except for a very brief moment, the Lickmax flow was always slightly behind the Acer Cube 360 and overall it was always in the group of very good AIOs compared to the group of relatively okay. AIOs. Once we pump up the load to 250 watts, nothing really changed. Sitting at 55.1 degrees C above ambient, the Lickmax flow now performed exactly like the Lian Li Galahad 360. The noise to performance ratio, however, slightly changed. It is still glued to the Acer Cube, but now it is also a tiny bit behind the overall ratio of a Galahad 360 performance and getting further and further away from any other AIO. But it's the max speed that was most interesting because instead of becoming incredibly loud at some point, like the Galahad performance, the Lick Max Flow keeps being okay-ish loud until the very end. Which is why when we normalize everything to 41 dB, it is actually number two overall. But once we push up the load to 320 watt, we saw the real benefit. At 75.4 degrees C above ambient, the Lick Max Flow 360 managed to land on the fifth spot of every cooler we have tested so far on this test bench. An excellent result. The corresponding noise to performance ratio looks even better than the two other ones before. Normalized at 41 dB, we still got the second spot, but the part where it outperforms a Li and Li Galahad 2 has now become much, much bigger. Compared to the Acer Cube 360, it is really close, like unnoticeably close without a dB meter and temperature numbers with decimals. Performance as a whole, I gotta say, extremely close to a Acer Cube 360 and overall very very good. Not quite the best one we have seen so far but at the very top of our list. So Anamax did quite the good job here. And with that let's take a closer look at this AIO. An Anamax Lick Max Flow exists in multiple sizes from 240 all the way up to 420 just without the 280 for some reason. It comes in a relatively standard box for an AIO. Inside we'll get the usual bunch of important stuff. First off the installation hardware for every nowadays relevant socket with some additional thermal paste and screws for the fans and radiator. Then we got the adapter for the fan ARGB and PWM to which we'll get in a minute but we also get an adapter to make the pump run at 100% all the time using SATA power as well as an ARGB controller in case your motherboard doesn't provide you with a 3-pin ARGB. As a little extra treat we also got here three of these tube holders that can be used to make the tubes look way more fancy. But then there is this. Similarly to Be Quiet AOs, this Enermax has a fill port to refill or replace the liquid inside. Not really necessary as it's more common that the system will become obsolete before the coolant becomes bad, but kind of cool. But to help you with this, you also got this PSU shortener. You can use this with a 24 pin to 
short it out or short the PSU out because the two pins that make your power supply start are shorted out. And then it provides you with a PWM header to attach to the pump. So you can make the pump spin and push the water through the system without actually starting your PC. How thoughtful of them and I will definitely not keep this adapter around for so many other things than its intended purpose. As mentioned before this is a thick boy or at least the performance says so. The radiator in use is a 38mm thick boy with about 90mm overhang on both ends. In the middle we counted 19 FPI and 12 water channel. And in case you forgot what cooler you are using NMX made sure to add a reminder for you. The fans used on here are quite interesting as well. It's a 5 wing design with a relatively small middle section. And ignoring the RGB they do kinda look like Arctic P12s if you ask me. Spinning at max speed we are looking at 1800 rpm which reminds me again of the P12 but up to 58.03 CFM and up to 2.4 mm of H2O. So definitely radiator worthy fans. And with some rubber on the corners paired with the fact that there is no gap allowing the air to jump back I believe NMX did a fine job here. But connecting them is another topic because instead of relying on PVM and 3 pin ARGB NMX used something that to me looks like mini PCIe 8 pin. Look how cute that thing is. Of course we got the included adapter to get back to regular motherboard connections. I have seen this type of connector twice until now, this being the second time. The first time was on the EK Nucleus and I do like working with it. It may be bigger than the regular stuff, sure, but it is only one connector and it feels solid. Unlike the proprietary alternatives that we have seen in the past, each and every one of them was either flimsy or breaks too quickly and, and just issues. But this, this is a good approach. Exiting the radiator we got 400mm worth of tubes which are nicely sleeved and adjustable at the water block. And they do feel high quality. They could have been 50 or 100mm longer but at least they feel nice. And this brings us to the next extraction this cage. The pump is sitting on top of the 55 by 55 millimeter water block which originally has some thermal paste but that had to go for the benchmarks. It is also powered by PVM however on top of that we got another 60 millimeter fan. This one pulls air from the top and blows it down through the openings onto the VRMs. It's a quite similar approach to what Arctic did on the Lucid Freezer or all the AIOs that came with that type of stuff since, but it's definitely a helping tool. You can't really hear it because it's so small, even at max speed, or at least RDB meter wasn't able to pick it up, so you don't have to worry about that, but active VRM cooling might not be quite the thing yet, but having that fan that that just casually pushes some air onto them without a doubt is better than not to have it. And in case you installed the water block in an alternative orientation, you can always remove the top cap and then turn it around to get the NMX logo straight again. Speaking of installation, to get the cooler going we first need to either install the AMD or Intel retention bracket onto the water block, then on Intel take the provided backplate and shove the Intel screws through them while securing them on the other side with the washer, and position the whole thing behind the motherboard and add some spacers. Over on AMD remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the AMD screws. And now on both platforms slap the water block on top of the CPU, don't forget to remove the plastic cover that protects the pre-applied thermal paste and screw the whole thing down using springs and screws. Overall I am happy with what Anormax did here performance wise. The performance is quite high on the chart, for low, high and very high the Lickmax flow was able to perform on both max performance and noise to performance. The quality in theory is alright, the whole thing feels sturdy, the RGB implementation used to look good. The lights on the fans are bright, I can't count the LEDs and everything was nice and shiny. And now I would have had a few lines about the RGB on top of the water plug, however it died. Somewhere in between 
me doing the benchmarks, then putting this aside until I do the A-roll shooting, the RGB just died. And I can make it run if I connect only the ARGB from the water block, but then it starts to flicker, and if I add the fans back to the loop, everything starts to flicker. Something died in there. So yeah, quality control. Which is an issue, so let's just focus on the performance and keep in mind that for some reason the RGB died. For the first time in a few months, we got an AIO where the installation procedure wasn't a nightmare. What a change. But the 8-pin combined connector for PVM and ARGB really grew on me. Easy to remove and install, daisy chainable from one fan to another, and I hope to see more of exactly this in future devices. They do look like mini GPU cables. Cute. Then we got that additional fan on the water block, which sure, it won't change the world, definitely not in a lighting way, but it definitely helps with VRM temps, just to keep them in check. So overall, performance-wise, I am very happy with how this thing turned out, and the only real thing I can nag about is that the 400mm tubes are a bit short, 450 would have been better, and that the ARGB died. Price-wise, it's actually alright. I can get one of these for about 113 bucks right now in here, and considering its placement on the benchmark list, I believe that to be a quite good price. So to recommend or not to recommend. Performance-wise, it's a high-performance cooler, but without the premium price tag, so I would consider it definitely for whatever you want to cool down nowadays. I do have a slight issue with the fact that the ARGB just died. Uh, I am not aware of there being so many other reviews out there right now, I would have to look it up, but uh, I hope I am like a singular example of that happening. We can try it again, because I have here an RGB connection, yep, nothing. And if I add the rest of the bunch, nothing, no, now everything died. Yeah, I will try to find if there are more cases of this happening. In that case, uh, quality control, you know, redo your work. And uh, kind of unfortunate to end the review <laughs> with that RGB. It's really the wrong time. If it would have died tomorrow, I wouldn't know about it, and this would have never been a topic, but it kind of did. Yeah, the ARGB died. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Animax and their Lick Max Flow in 360. And at this point, a huge thank you to Animax for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a lawyer for that 60 mil fan, because it has been sitting behind bars for long enough. Or we will just break it out. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Acer Cube 360. It's like the Lickmax Slow, just a bit different. Slightly better performing, and with working ARGB. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.